In my experience, many Node.js projects need access to a database. My go-to ORM, or Object Relational Mapper, is SQLize. In this video, we'll show you how to add a MySQL database connection to your Node.js TypeScript project. Let's get started. Let's go to the browser, just type in Docker MySQL in the search, and you can find right here the first MySQL official image, the Docker. So if you scroll down, uh, you're going to have um, the line of code that you can use to start your Docker container where you have MySQL. So let's go ahead and copy and we can go back to VS Code. Let's go ahead and make this window a little bigger. Let's go ahead and paste the code and we need to make some changes. In the name, we're going to put MySQL DB. We also need to add port. We'll do 3306. This is our host port and our container port will be 3306 as well. That's the port MySQL runs on. Right here, we have MySQL root password. We will keep it just secret. And then we also have MySQL tag, right? But instead of tag, we need to put an actual tag, right? So we'll put uh, latest. Let's go ahead and run it. And it looks like we got uh, an extra dollar sign. Let's go ahead and fix it. And run it again. I already have an image, so I didn't pull an image here, but if you don't, it will pull the image automatically and will start the container. And now you're going to have a database server running on the port 3306. Let's go ahead and switch to a table plus. I already have connection configured right here. If you click on edit, you can see I have a MySQL local. Uh, I have a host, um, local host, right? 3306 my port. The username will be root and the password will be secret, right? So let's go ahead and test. Connection is okay, and then we can connect. So in table plus right here on the very top, you can click the show databases icon, or you can simply do control key or command key. And then you have the schemas that we have. So um, let's create a new one. We'll call it just simply my blog. And we'll leave everything as default. Click OK. And now we can open this database. And obviously there is no tables. Let's switch to VS Code and open a .env file. So in this file, we can add database configuration variables. The name of the database will be my blog. Um, the username is root, password is secret, host is going to be local host or 127.0.0.1 and the port 3306. Let's go ahead and save it. In the previous video, we created a configuration module where we created a property, which is a function that basically gets these environment variables, db name, db username, db password, db host, and db port. We will be using it to configure connection to the database from SQLize ORM. Since we're using TypeScript in our Node.js project, we need to install SQLize TypeScript. Let's go ahead and switch back to the browser. And here we can just Google SQLize TypeScript. And let's go ahead and go to SQLize TypeScript. And you can see that they're still working hard on making SQLize a breathe to use TypeScript. And some parts are still at work and you can use SQLize TypeScript package. It also tells us to install at types.node. If you scroll down, you can see how to use SQLize with a TypeScript and you can see it's pretty verbose. So I do prefer to use SQLize TypeScript. I think it's... Uh, the API here is a little bit more, you know, readable and less verbose. And it tells you how to install, you know, SQLize TypeScript, right? So you'll need to install it types that node and it types validator. And I do think we have types node installed already. So we'll just need to do the types validator. It also tells you to install SQLize, reflect metadata and SQLize TypeScript. Finally, it tells you to use target ES6 or higher and then you need to put experimental decorators true enemy decorator metadata true and all this thing you need to put in your config.json file let's go back to vs code let's take a look at the package.json in our dev dependencies we already have at types.node so we only have to install at types validator as a dev dependency let's go ahead and do that 
Now we need to install SQLize dependencies. And besides uh, SQLize, Reflect Metadata and SQLize TypeScript, we also need to install MySQL2 is actually going to be the driver that's connecting to MySQL. Now let's open tsconfig.json file and it extends tsconfig node 20. Let's jump in there. And as we can see, the target is ES 2022, which is higher than ES6. So we're good in here. All we have to do is in the compiler options, we will add experimental decorators true and emit decorator metadata as true as well. If you are enjoying this video, please like and subscribe to our channel to help YouTube recommend it to more viewers. Now let's go ahead and create database connection file. So we'll do code um, src db connection.cs. Let's go ahead and put the following code in here. We're going to be importing SQLize from SQLize TypeScript. And you're going to be careful to actually import it from SQLize TypeScript and not SQLize. We're also going to import config from our config module or config file. Then we're going to call get database config method on this config module. And we're also going to be using the split operator because this get database config returns an object and we need to put the properties of this object in SQLize configuration object. We also will need to add dialect, which will be MySQL. And we're going to tell that the models will be in the models folder. Let's go ahead and create our first model. It's going to be a simple model. We'll name it person. So let's do code src models person.ts since it's a model we capitalize the first letter let's go ahead and put the following code in there and take a look we are importing or optional from sqlize we also import decorators from sqlize typescript and those decorators are table model column data type created at updated at we are going to be using more strict in a TypeScript sense model definition. So we're going to be using interfaces here. So there will be first one will be person attributes and it will be have ID and name. We will also have another interface that's called person creation attributes. And this will extend the optional type and the optional type will basically tell TypeScript that ID is an optional. So meaning in order to create a person, you will just have to put a name because ID will be created automatically by the SQLize. So now we have a table decorator and here, here you can describe the table. I'm telling that the type stamps are true and the table name will be persons, plural, and a model name is person, you know, with a capital P. Now we're going to define an export class person and it's going to extend model and it's important, right? So you need to extend model and we're importing it from SQLize TypeScript. And we put person attributes and person creation attributes as generics in here. So the first will have a column ID and we have a decorator to tell SQLize that it's a primary key. Uh, the type will be data type. We're gonna just use UUID. However, you can use uh, big integer unsigned and auto increment. And then the default value will just say UUID before. Next, we're going to say declare ID of type string, and we're going to have to use declare right here so TypeScript doesn't emit ID again. The next column will be name, and all it will be is just data type string. Again, we will declare name as string. Next, we will uh, add timestamps, and we will use decorator at created at and at updated at, and the values will be created at and updated at. The types will be date, and I'm also using underscores because I like underscores is my created at and updated at timestamps. And you also don't need to say that those are optional, right? Right here, you don't need to put them in the optional attributes because SQLize or rather SQLize TypeScript kind of understands that they're not needed when you're going to be creating a person. Well, let's go ahead to index.ts file. And right here, we want to import uh, SQLize or our connection and our model uh, person. So now we need to create the table for that model. And the way you can do it in SQLize, right? You can do SQLize that sync. However, this is an asynchronous action. So we either need to put that then or use a wait, right? Let's use a wait. 
and in uh, node 20 you cannot really use await in the main file so we need to create ify or immediately invoked function expression let's go ahead and put the parentheses here and invoke function so we'll put async and this is going to be the function and let's go ahead and move our code inside this ify and save so right now we can run npm run dev and as you can see we have a log right here and uh, sqlize in the development mode it logs by default so you can uh, change this by put logging right here there will be a property so you can change that and uh, define the logging it should be a function so double check the documentation for that uh, but anyways uh, like I said, we got a uh, log right here that we're executing first. It's actually checking if the table exists, right? And it doesn't exist, so it created a table. Now we restarted the server, and now it ran and checked again for the table, and it said a uh, table exists, so we don't need to create a table, so SQLize didn't create the table second time. Now let's go ahead and update the code to create a person, right? We'll put person dot create and we'll put an object here. And like we said, ID is optional. We don't need to put it in. Well, we can't put it in really because SQLize will take care of it. We'll just put name and then we'll put, let's say, Alex. Let's go ahead and make changes. And as you can see, again, uh, SQLize checked if the table exists and it does exist. And then what it did, it showed us that it's executing a query to insert persons with ID and name, created it and updated it in the database table. Let's go ahead and create another person. We can do John, for example. Let's go ahead and save. And SQLize also created uh, John in the database table. Let's go ahead and switch to table plus to verify that. We have to refresh first. And then we can see that we have a table persons right here. It's a little bit small, so let me make it a little bigger here. So we have um, there were two records, right? One John, one name. We have created it and updated at timestamps. And we also have ID, and this is ID is UUID assigned uh, by default by SQLize. That's how you add SQLize to a Node.js TypeScript project. For smaller projects, using SQLize.sync is fine, but for bigger projects, it is better to use SQLize migrations to create tables in the database. If you want to learn how to do that, watch our video on SQLize migrations.